Bye, Clyde. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Steve. See ya. Bye, South Gate. Bye, Bear. Bye, South Gate. Was nests here before but they were more squirrel or chipmunk nests these are pack rat nests and they make quite a mess it's so funny I noticed that I'd bought these lights and <laughs> so one of them brought or they brought you know they go for like shiny colorful things to bring into their nests so they brought this copper little like string light thing in there. What's this? It's part of the solar thing. Yeah, so they're collecting all these things in here. So they're probably in this pile of wood somewhere, fortunately. <laughs> tumor on its head. Holy smokes. It has a growth on its head, like, holy. If Hannah was here, she would be all over this, like, Crazy. A dead bird. This dead bird was in the net in the nest too.
What a bummer. I don't mind like the squirrels making nests, but the pack rats, they pee and poo on everything. So there's like pee and poo on the wood. Pee is the worst, right? Because it stains it too. So frig. That's what I get for taking so long to do this, I guess. My name is Michelle and I'm here to build a cabin. Okay, I'm here to start building the cabin, finally. Just took me a couple hours to tidy, organize, um, and yeah, there's at least one pack rat living in that. There's usually two. They, they might even have babies, but there's definitely, definitely two because they usually live together. And I know this because we had pack rats in our cabin actually a couple years ago. We had two pack rats living in our cabin for a few months over the winter and it was horrendous. They're really cute, to be honest, but they're so destructive. I'm gonna bring everything out. So if you're brand new here and this is your first video, I milled all of this stuff that is on the deck. I milled all this wood on my sawmill last fall. I spent 15 hours bringing it down this mountain by myself bringing it down the mountain, stacking it and storing it. And it's been there since the, it's been there over the winter and up until now. So I have everything there for the posts, the beams, the wind bracing and rafters, rafters and rafter boards. So it's really a matter of assembling things at this point. So I'm gonna just bring everything out. I obviously have to clean up quite a bit of mess but I'm gonna bring everything out um, in terms of the posts and the beams to get started for the front and the back and reacquaint myself. I don't remember how I was exactly planning on doing this. So I have to kind of remeasure things and remember what, what I was thinking in the fall. But um, yeah, let's go. Things have warped and twisted too a fair amount, so it's not the best. It's raining. I'll just wait until this passes. Go ahead, I don't mind. has passed mostly it's still drizzling a little bit but now I don't know what I was thinking I wasn't sure I guess if I was going to make any little notches in these beams I don't think it's really necessary and I think that really probably all it's doing is weakening the beam structurally that said I bought all this stuff last year, like the hardware, and I bought these lag screws and they don't go in very far. So that means that I think I might need to notch the beams out a little bit, maybe half inch or three quarters of an inch to allow these to go in more. I also have some long, big long spikes that I can use. I think those will probably be okay. I'm not exactly sure. People will probably say no, but I'll just have to see how this goes. Okay, I've decided not to do any notching. I actually just took a chainsaw and trimmed this corner a little bit just to make that flush. 
and I have it square. So from that point to that point and that point to that point are the same. In my little pile of wood, I don't know what these are. I don't know what, I've got these little, like a two by four. There's a few of them. Uh, I don't know if I milled those for the purpose of bracing. I genuinely don't remember at all. Anyway, there's a couple that are long enough, so I'm gonna secure these and then put some braces at the top too, just to keep it as square as possible um, before I start to put the nails in through the beam to the post and do any kind of securing. I wanna try and stabilize it all first. Having learned from that thing, Probably is moving anyway, but what can you do? I think I'll just get this out of the way. I think no matter how much I try and double check and triple check, there's going to be like problems. I'm just going to be working through them no matter what. I'm going to make mistakes constantly and I just have to accept that. So if I go home and I talk to Steve, who's an engineer, if he thinks that what I did isn't strong enough, then I can always come and add, add some things or, you know, do whatever to make it better if it needs to be. I pre-drilled these holes last fall for these things and I still am not 100% sure how I'm doing the walls. I'm really, I guess, just taking this one step at a time. So I think for now, I'm just gonna put these flush with the outside, knowing that I can change it if I need to or want to. The way I think I'm gonna do the walls is just boards on the outside, so rather than framing inside for walls, like I did on the shed. If you're wondering why I'm not really doing like proper traditional timber framing technique, it's for a few reasons. I don't know how, I've never done it. I feel that on this particular build and this location, it's not the time for me to try to learn something like that. I think I would be here for years building this cabin if I were to try to do that for my first time doing a proper timber frame. So for this one, I'm just doing it um, with the thoughts in mind to be as efficient as possible and basic. This is just going to be a rustic little bunkie, something similar to the shed, just to tuck away and spend the night and watch a storm or watch a sunset. So this is really just very, very basic little structure. And I got this thing, impact wrench, after many, many people telling me to do it. So let's see. <laughs> oh, washer. This is rad. Okay. I've braced it. I don't know. Um, to try to keep it as square as possible. I'm 100% sure it's gonna be moving, but as it is now, it's all pretty good. And the big question is, can I lift this? It's gonna be heavy. My back is yelling at me already. Should have this 
is handy. Oh, oh man. Hmm. Oh shit. Grapes. It's heavy. Oh, it's really heavy. Oh man. I have to think about this. I just saw the other pack rat. The one, so the second, at least a different one than the other one. It doesn't have this tumor on its head. So I know who is who. I think I am going to name them Phil and Buster. Get it? Remember all that Trump stuff? Filibuster? I don't watch the news. But Steve would have the news on TV like while I was cooking dinner. And all I kept hearing about was like something filibuster. Filibuster, filibuster. <laughs> so the rat's names are Phil and Buster. And Buster obviously is the one that has the tumor on his head. Now what? <laughs> there. I don't know what the fuss was about. Right? Huh. Oh. Should have had to drill with me. No. I did it. Now what? These posts are so warped and twisted. This one is anyway. Look at that. Oh well, <laughs> what do you do?
morning. Words just don't describe how peaceful and beautiful it is. I am going to stay in the cabin tonight, so I am going to drive down to the cabin once I'm done here for the day. Because I will need to charge some things. I don't have anything <clears throat> for charging down here yet. Up here yet. So I will need to do that. And then I can have a proper shower. Proper shower and charge things. Be shy. Come on. Buster is awake now. He's eating. I haven't seen Phil yet, but Buster's awake. Sorry, I'm wrecking your house. I'm wrecking your house. Hi. I thought I would just check my, my I know my floor is a little bit wonky and whether this is important to, to share or explain, I don't really know, but um, maybe this is just helpful information for someone else. So I, because I had to shim up that one post there, I was like, well, let me just, I'm just trying to learn differently from that wall to doing this one. So why don't I just see how level this floor is, see how long these, these are uh, from the bottom to the top and see kind of what I'm going to be in for. And it turns out my floor is really, un it's really low in this corner. And I had this problem last year. I came out and I, and I propped it up, but it seems to be down again. And I don't know if it's the earth maybe has settled a little bit here or just general shoddy workmanship, maybe a combination of the both. But anyway, I was like, well, I could accommodate and put something on the bottom of this like I did up there. Or I could try to lift this subfloor in this corner um, and, and see if I can't shim it underneath. So that's what I'm going to try. Doing this by yourself is tricky because I can get it up barely. But I can't get the rock underneath at the same time. Would you guys mind giving me a hand? I'm gonna try. If I can't do it this way, then I'll just have to do it the other way. Again, I'm not, I feel like, I feel like my purpose in this journey is to share the problems to help other people work through them too. So. I feel like it's not, yeah, it's helping a little bit. 
It would come up a lot more. Shoddy workmanship, I tell ya. I think this lever needs to be longer. I don't have anything longer. Well, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, I got a longer two by four and I can definitely push it up easily, but I also now can't reach that. So I think I'm gonna use this tree and screw into it. Hopefully it'll hold just for me to be able to jump over there and push the rock under. Sorry, tree. holding, so that's good. I'm gonna accept that. Drill is here. Okay, same as before. Here goes. Brace is too long. Damn. It's hitting the ground over there. Put this down. was hard. That was hard. Oh my goodness. It's stable. 